The 13th round of Corps Commander talks concluded on Sunday, the 10th of October, in Moldo in eastern Ladakh. But no agreement was reached on troop withdrawal at patrolling point 15 in the Hot Springs area. While the two sides have agreed to additional rounds of talks. The failure of the two commanders' talks to reach an amicable solution, based on the previously agreed disengagement and de escalation process, suggests that a short to medium term armed stalemate could prevail on the border, with sporadic border skirmishes or even an intensive limited war possibility. Why would there be a chance of another tense winter standoff? because the Chinese continue to block Indian security forces from entering locations where they had deployed patrols on a regular basis. There have been further intrusions in the southern Demchok region where Indian forces are allegedly unable to patrol over the Charding Nala. Also, the Chinese forces have penetrated the central sector's Barahoti Plains and the eastern sector's Tawong Tracts, but have returned after being intercepted by Indian troops. China also expresses its views regarding India's Vice President's visit to Arunachal Pradesh, which is an essential and inalienable part of India. Also, the Chinese troops have been deployed in considerable numbers all along the line of actual control, backed up by a quick and extensive build-up of permanent or semi-permanent infrastructure. On the other hand, unlike the last time, the Indian Army is now much well prepared for the winter, there is better infrastructure and better provisioning. An unconfirmed report says that anti-aircraft systems such as the Russian-built S-400 have been stationed in Aksai Chin. This may be done to neutralize Indian aviation assets that have been stationed in greater numbers at air bases in both the western and eastern sectors. The Indian Army chief summed up the situation along the border when he said, so it indicates that China are here to stay. We are keeping a careful eye on all of these changes, but if they are here to stay, we will as well. The current situation along the LAC, in the western sector of the India-China border areas, has been caused by unilateral attempts of the Chinese side to alter the status quo in violation of the bilateral agreements. Hot Springs and Demchok continue to pose challenges. The Chinese have now turned it into a sovereignty issue, which is problematic. Previously, they claimed that it was only a territory dispute. With winter on its way, the standoff will continue. And this will be a second harsh winter, with thousands of troops battling each other along the LAC. What should be India's China strategy in the altered regional and global geopolitics? An assessment of where things stand in India-China relations may be found in a recent discussion paper. India's Path to Power, Strategy in a World Adrift, launched on 2 October. In a summary, it ascribes China's increasingly aggressive stance to its interpretation of the shifting balance of power, both with regard to India and the United States, its major geopolitical competitor. And, the events at the LAC are motivated by a desire to show India, by China, that its strategic relationship with the US and participation in the Quad cannot provide it with an effective deterrence against China. To deal with the China issue, India's path to power includes both a border strategy and a national plan. On the military side, the paper acknowledges that the Indian Armed Forces have shown their ability to prevent additional substantial incursion over the LAC by Chinese soldiers. But the firepower required to remove the latter from locations already taken is inadequate. Furthermore, because to the nature of the border, permanent deployments all along the LAC are just not possible, even though surveillance and monitoring can be significantly expanded. India's military forces should be restructured, such that it has numerous mobile attack teams that can quickly deploy over the border to secure territory in the event of Chinese incursion. This would offer the Indian side bargaining power as evidenced by what occurred in South Pingongso in eastern Ladakh. The goal should be to persuade the opponent that such invasions can be costly and hazardous. 
In the wider geopolitical context, India has little choice but to enhance its security relationships with other big nations and through forum like the Quad. But India always maintains that such alliances are not intended to oppose China. However, this deny may increase China's pressure on India. The paper also suggests that India should refocus on its foreign policy on the vast constituency of developing nations with which it shares key concerns and interests. India has the potential to emerge as a natural leader of this constituency which will extend India's diplomatic space. Despite the chaos and uncertainty that has engulfed the world, still opportunities have arisen for developing economies such as India. This is a opportunity that should not be given up as many others have in the past. The last round of military level talks between India and China exchanged harsh words. While India said it made some constructive suggestions for resolving the remaining areas, it found the Chinese side was not agreeable and also could not provide any forward-looking proposals. And China said that India still persisted in its unreasonable and unrealistic demands, which added difficulties to the negotiations. As core commanders meeting remained inconclusive, the foreign minister of India refused to negotiate with any other bilateral subject unless the current stalemate is addressed. While the defense minister pledged to preserve Indian land to the last inch. Over the past year and a half, the India-China bilateral relationship has deteriorated like never before. And it will continue to deteriorate further. So, India has to be prepared for the change that is coming.